Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. So in today's video, we're going to learn a new topic, aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Okay, so let's look at what is aggregate demand first, right? So aggregate demand is a curve that shows the amount of a nation's output or real GDP that is demanded by buyers collectively at each possible price level. Now, there are a few keywords here in place. One is that the amount of a nation's output or real GDP. And then second one is demanded by buyers collectively. What that means is you need to remember there are four categories of buyers, uh, which are the households, uh, private businesses, the government, as well as external or foreign buyers. Okay, so now let's take a look at how the aggregate demand curve looks like. As you can see, the curve is downward sloping. What that means is there's a negative or inverse relationship between the economy's overall price level, usually measured by the price index, and the amount of goods and services or real GDP being demanded by the four categories of buyers. Take a look at this illustration, okay? See if initially the price level was at PA, the amount of quantity demanded or GDP demanded is QA here, okay? However, if the price level increases to PB, okay, increases, what you can see is the amount of real GDP being demanded falls, okay? So you can see there's a negative relationship. Price increases, GDP demanded falls. So what that means is there's an upward or backward movements along the same aggregate demand curve. Okay, so why is the aggregate demand curve downward sloping? Now guys, the reason why the AD curve is downward sloping, it's not the same as the reason as to why the demand curve is downward sloping. So if any of you have learned principles of microeconomics before, you would know that, or you would remember, that one of the reasons why the demand curve is downward sloping is due to the substitution and income effect. Okay, but that is not the case for aggregate demand curve. Okay, why? It's because now we are looking at the economy as a whole. We're not just looking at the, uh, from the perspective of buyers, but we're also looking at the perspective of the sellers. Okay, so when we, the consumers, if we pay less, Okay, sure, it's a good thing for us. We're experiencing, um, you know, better affordability in buying the goods and services. However, when we pay someone less, it means it's lower nominal income for them, you know, the resource suppliers. So what it means is a lower price here. It does not mean that there's an increase in nominal income for everyone in the economy. Okay, so because we're looking at two different parties. Okay, so why is the aggregate demand curve downward sloping then? Okay, there are three reasons. Okay, I'm going to show you one by one. Okay, first of all, it's due to the wealth or real balance effect. Okay, what that means is when the price level increases, okay, say from PA to PB, what happens is um, in terms of real wealth or purchasing power, it falls. Because although price level increases, there's no change in our incomes, right? We're still experiencing the same salaries, same incomes. So what it means is we feel that things are more expensive, okay? Lesser affordability on our part. So, what, so that is why when price level increases, we're not able to um, buy more or buy as much as we did before. That is why when the price level increases, uh, real wealth falls, what that means is it's translated as a fall in consumption. So fall in consumption would mean that there's a fall in aggregate demand. Okay, so here I've written it down for you. Okay, so I purposely didn't show you first while I'm explaining because sometimes, you know, people have the tendency to, um, I don't know, do two things at the same time. So when I'm explaining, try to listen and here you can just, um, well, read it on your own later. Now let's look at the second reason as to why the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. Okay? The second reason is the interest rate effect. Now to understand the interest rate effect, we need to assume two things. One, we need to assume that the supply of money at one point in time is fixed. And we also need to assume that the price of money is interest rate. Okay, so now let's go back to our diagram. Say there's an increase in the price level. When there's an increase in the price level, what it means is we need more money to make purchases. Okay, so when we need more money as compared to the supply of money, okay, what it means is there's a shortage of money, right? So how does that um, translate in terms of the price of money? When there's a shortage, it's bound to hike up the price of something, right? Yeah, so in this case, when there's more demand for money, in the money market compared to the supply of money, the price of money will increase. When the price of money increase, what it means is the interest rate will increase. Now when the interest rate increase, 
uh, what it means is it'll be just more expensive for people to make loans. So people and businesses, they will have to delay their plans to buy new capital or you know, purchase anything. So what that means is when interest rate increase, consumption will fall. Investment spending will fall. So remember, C and IG are both components of aggregate spending. Aggregate spending here is similar to aggregate demand. So that is why when price level increases, there's a fall in aggregate demand. Okay, so what is the third reason as to why the AD curve is downward sloping? The third reason is called the foreign purchases or international trade effect. Okay, right, so when our price level increases, okay, when price level in Malaysia increases, what that means is, in terms of exchange rates, the ringgit appreciates, okay? When our, I repeat, when the price level in Malaysia increases, the ringgit appreciates. When the ringgit appreciates, what it means is it's just more expensive for our goods to be bought by foreign buyers. So our exports will fall. However, we find it cheaper to buy outside goods. So our imports increases. Remember, what happens when exports decrease but imports increase? What happens is our net export will fall. Now remember, net export is a component of um, buying, right? Uh, aggregate spending, right? Or AD. That is why the there's a fall in aggregate demand. Okay, let's summarize here. Okay, looking at the three different reasons as to why the AD curve is downward sloping. Okay, I always uh, I start the discussion with the same or similar point. Okay, feel free to turn it around and discuss what happens when price level falls. Okay, here when the price level increases, people's real wealth falls. When price level increases the demand of money increases, therefore the interest rate increases. When the price of money in Malaysia increases, what it means is the ringgit appreciates. Now regardless whichever point we, we want to explain, it always leads to the same effect, which is consumption will fall. Consumption and investment will fall. XN will fall. Now these are components of aggregate spending. Components of aggregate spending is similar or the same as components of aggregate demand. Can you see that? So whatever it is you're trying to explain, start with what happens when uh, the price level change first and you tell the story and explain how it affects the aggregate demand. So that is basically what you're showing here. When the price changes, there's a change here. When price level increases, aggregate demand falls. When price level falls, aggregate demand increase. That is why the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. Okay, so now let's take a look at what are the determinants of aggregate demand. So determinants are basically factors that makes the aggregate demand curve shift. Now you may remember just now we were talking about what happens when the price level changes, right? So when the price level increase or decrease, there's a change in aggregate demand but it's only a movement along the same aggregate demand curve. Now, if you want to talk about what makes the aggregate demand curve shift, we're going to study these determinants, okay? So it's uh, two different things. So what are the determinants of aggregate demand? You have to look at the four categories of buyers. What are the four categories of buyers? Consumers. So consumers do what? Consumer spending. Another category is the businesses, right? Or private sector. So what is the category of buying? investment spending and there's also the government sector so they will also buy under government spending and of course there's the foreign buyers so there's net export spending so now let's take a look at um, consumer spending first okay so basically what it means is when people buy more or less at each price level okay so uh, what are the sub sub points under consumer spending there's plenty uh, but here i've only highlighted four in terms of consumer wealth. Okay, wealth consists of financial and physical assets. Okay, so if there's an if there's a fall in the value of consumer assets, okay, people will have more inclination uh, or more you know incentive to save. So when people want to save more, obviously they will have lesser incentive to consume. So the consumption will fall. Now remember, consumption or C here is a component of AD, right? So when C falls, AD will fall. Now this AD fall. Okay, what it means is there's a shift of the aggregate demand curve to the left. Okay? Another point is consumer expectations. When people expect that their future incomes will improve later, okay, 
So normally what that means is they want to spend now. Okay, We spend now lah, because in future we'll just be able to get our money back. So they'll spend more now. So when C or consumption increases, obviously savings will fall. What that means is aggregate demand curve will increase. That is shift to the right. Now the point is household in debt to this. Okay, if there's high debts, high debts here, what it means is people have lesser inclination to uh, spend because they want to pay off their debts, right? So lower consumption, lower AD, shift to the left. Another point is taxes. If our personal taxes increase, we'll have lesser disposable income, right? Lesser disposable income means lesser consumption. Lesser consumption means a fall in AD. So if you notice, everything here leads to a fall or an increase in AD. So whatever happens here, it is shown by a shift, either shift to the right or shift to the left of the aggregate demand curve. Now the second determinant of aggregate uh, demand is investment spending, okay? So this refers to the purchases of capital goods by businesses. Now two of the most important determinant of uh, investment demand are interest rates and expected returns. Now you may have remembered we studied this in the last uh, topic, okay, topic four I believe. Okay, when we studied the relationship between interest rate and investment, we know that when interest rate changes, it will affect the amount of investment made. Here, I give an example. If interest rates increases, okay, cost of borrowing is just more. It's more expensive to borrow. Therefore, the investment plan or planned investment will fall. When IG falls, because IG is a direct component of spending, so AD will also fall. Fall here means AD curve shift to the left. The next um, determinant for investment spending is expected returns. Okay, so expected returns depends on many things, mainly technolo um, technological advancement, excess capacity, taxes, and expectations. So whenever each of these changes, it will change the AD. So here I've just um, scribbled several examples, which again, all of this you can obtain from the textbook or any reading materials. Okay, I'll just give one example. If there's good prospect in terms of if there's good technological advancement happening okay so obviously it's a very positive thing for the company right so they'll be able to invest more higher ig means higher ad what it means is ad curve shift to the right okay so in terms of excess capacity when there's more excess capacity so obviously there's more um they will companies will not uh, be demanding for new capital because their existing capacity is there so they will not be demanding for new capital so there's no incentive for them to invest more therefore aggregate demand curve falls shift to the left okay same thing with taxes more taxes being paid okay they'll have lesser profit after tax okay so less incentive um, to invest less um, fall in ad expectations as well it's either we're being pessimistic or optimistic if it's optimistic, people or companies will invest more. Investing more means higher ED. Shift to the right. Let's move on to the next point. Government spending is quite straightforward since G is a direct component of AD. When there's an increase in government spending, it's an injection, right? So there's an increase in aggregate demand. And finally, the fourth determinant, net export spending, is mainly due to these two points. National income abroad, meaning the income of our our neighbors, trading partners, as well as exchange rates. Okay, let's look at it one by one. Um, if there's an increase in national income abroad, okay, foreign demand will increase, meaning our trading partners will buy more of our goods. So meaning we have more uh, exports, right? So more exports is good for us, meaning if more export compared to imports, the XN will be positive. XN is a component of AD. So higher XN means higher AD, exchange rates. If the ringgit depreciates, what it means is there's a fall in value in ringgit. Okay, so what it means is uh, it's more expensive for us to buy uh, other countries' products. Okay, uh, so it, our import will fall. However, it's cheaper for them to buy our products, so our export will increase. More export compared to import means there's increase in net export. XN increase, ED increase. Now take note, we've learned about the multiplier effect, right? So here's how we show it using the aggregate demand curve. As you can see, when shifts happen, there, there's actually two movement. Okay, the first is the change in the determinant first. What determinant? This one. Either C 
i g g or x n when that changes this is the first change here the immediate change okay but then due to the multiply effect remember what multiply effect means meaning when there's an initial change in spending it will bring about to a much larger change in gdp okay so that is why that is the second change so this is the initial change two here is the full effect change okay so this is basically how we show the uh, multiply effect using aggregate demand curve